Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing well. I'm going to attempt a voiceover, though I don't know how well it's going to go because my husband's in the garage building something and my son is upstairs, basically at the top of the stairs. The door is closed, but he's still quite loud. So we'll see how this goes. I know it's silly that I included this in the video, but look how that paint is peeling off my brayer. I don't know about you, but this gave me <laughs> such satisfaction, like being able to pull that off in strips like that. Isn't that awesome? I just had to include it. <laughs> I know, silly. <laughs> uh, so today I'm going to do a jelly print with lots of layers and lots of patience. The colors I'm laying down now are Jelly Arts Paints in Lemon Zest, Mixed Berries, and Kiwi. So I'm just spraying it all over my plate. And this is not a part of the print. It's kind of just grunging up my jelly plate a little bit. Oh, and that's a Liquitex Basics in cadmium yellow, medium hue, and a medium magenta. And then some more Jelly Arts lemon zest. Now I'm taking the rest of that lemon zest and putting it on the plate again. And I'm going to add some texture. This texture plate is from Joggles and it's called Dash Dot. Just getting my 5x5 five five jelly plate ready so I can put the paint on there to use. And these stamps here, they're just homemade stamps from um, some foam cut into shapes and glued onto like cut out cardboard boxes. As easy and simple as that. And I always love the prints that I get from them. Like some of the time, like it's my favorite prints and it's just handmade. Anybody can do it. Here I just use this, I don't know, this rubbery tip thing to draw lines in it, but honestly in the print it doesn't even show up, so I wouldn't bother with it. Here I am using Bright Aqua Green Liquitex Basics Paint and again some more handmade foam stamps. Oh and I don't know if I mentioned that um, first stamp I use Liquitex Basics in Quinacridone Magenta. Here you'll see it's probably a huge faux pas, at least it was for me in doing this print. I used my heat gun in between the layers because I wanted to play and I didn't want to wait for the paint to dry. And you'll see in the end how well that worked for me. So this is a stamp. It's from Art by Mar Marlene, her signature collection. It doesn't have an actual name. None of her stamps have names. At least I can't find them. And even when I go on websites, I can't see a name. It just, the only info it has is the word stamp, B-M, and I'm not sure if it's an I-Z or a 1-Z. So I'll link it down below anyway. And I used the Ranger Archival Ink Pad in Cobalt. And here I'm just taking some Pasca markers or paint pens and doing a little doodling and again on my print this did not show up. I don't know why but I don't see it on the print. Maybe it's the whole heat gun thing. I don't know. I do not know. So this is Jelly Arts Paint in Kiwi, and this is a very old stencil. Like I'm talking probably, I've had it, oh goodness, probably 20 years, 
or at least close to 20 years. It's by Plaid Simply Stencils, and it's called Starbright. I just took the rest of what was left of the kiwi paint and just did a, like a kind of like a border around the edge of the print. Now this is a small stamp that I honestly, I don't know the name of it, and I'm not even entirely sure where I got it. I do believe it's just a, like one of those $1.50 stamp sets that you can get at Michael's sometimes, and they're like dollar bins. And I just stamped it out using black archival ink by Ranger. And I believe these are all the layers that I add. Yep. So I'm getting my Liquitex paint in unbleached titanium. And you want a very thin layer of paint. You do want to get the entire plate covered, but you want the paint so thin that you can see the print underneath. And then you want to put your paper on it right away to pull the print. And I am rubbing really, really hard to try and get everything to come off onto this jelly print. And as I lift to peak, I can see that it's staying, like there's fairly large areas that the paint is just remaining on the jelly plate. And I could not get it to come up. And look at that print. I want to cry like that it was beautiful and it just did not come up I wanted to have a little fit because I just wanted that to work so bad and I could see that it would have been awesome so here I'm just I laid down more paint to get the remainder of what was left on the plate I'm so sad that that print didn't work out I really liked it. So I'm just cleaning off my jelly plate with a baby wipe to get rid of the little bits that I just could not get to come off. Look at that. I am so sad that it did not work. Ah, and I really love how that Art by Marlene stamp looks in the print. I love that stamp. That was my absolute favorite stamp that she has put out. Absolute favorite. And I'm not going to toss out this print. I don't know what I'm going to use it for, but I will find a use for it because I love it so much. And because I love it so much, I had to attempt to do it again, but I just couldn't get it exactly the same. So here the paints are, hmm, I used yellow oxide and, no I did not, that was on my third print. This one is that um, yellow medium hue again and the pink is medium magenta. And I couldn't find my Joggles texture plate anywhere. I looked and I looked and I couldn't find it. So I just used some cardboard and some handmade foam stamps to add texture to the paint. And all the steps besides that first one, because I couldn't find my Joggles texture plate, all the steps from here on are the same as what I did before. Because like I said, I was trying trying so hard to recreate that first print and I believe I even said in my last video that you jelly printing you're getting one of a kind prints because it's I think it's impossible to recreate exactly the same print twice because I would have loved to have been able to I mean, the, the next prints, they're not bad. They turned out pretty good, but 
just doesn't touch that first one. That was a little heavy handed there on the paint on that foam stamp. And that side jelly plate, the 5x5, five five, I'm just taking off the excess paint onto a scrap piece of paper so it doesn't get too heavy because I find it's getting very, I don't know, like you know how jelly plates have this certain feel, almost like it has a little bit of slime, not slime, but it just has that jelly feel. Well, my 5x5 five five is feeling very dry. So I'm trying to um, take more of the paint off and not just leave it on there for, you know, until the next time I play with it to see if that helps. I mean, it still works. It still pulls prints, but it's just not the same as it used to be. And it's not old at all. It's um, maybe only... I don't know if it was before Christmas. It was whenever we did um, the Art Foamies and Jelly Arts did the collaboration together. It was either just before Christmas or after. So it hasn't been that long. Going in with the same stamp. If this stamp is not a $1.50 stamp from Michaels, my second guess would be, you know how Prima, I think it was Prima, would come out with these little teeny tiny stamps? It could be one of those. So this print, I was more lucky, like in the, I got it to come up. And it is a nice print, like it's very, very beautiful, like it's just, you know, that first print, it got me and I just could not, couldn't beat it. So this color is a Liquitex Basic Paint Cotton, it's Yellow Oxide. I really like the color. I'm just taking some bubble wrap and then I'm going to um, this just dry paper towel and I'm removing some of the paint because I didn't want a solid layer of the yellow. And then I'm going in with some golden. Let me see. It's a golden fluid in, oh, I think it's the quinacridone nickel azel gold. I love this color. And this one, what am I doing? Okay, just taking my bright aqua green. I chose different foam stamps this time and different... Oh goodness, I missed all that. Okay, the texture plate I used when I applied the Azo Gold, that was a texture plate by Carabelle. And part of my French, but I think it says non tisse. I'm not sure if that's pronounced right, but it translates to, well, the exact translation is non woven. So I'm sure it probably means unwoven or something. And let's see, then I did the handmade stamps. And that's more handmade stamps. And that color there, that is a beautiful, it's another golden fluid paint and it's called turquoise. And it's um, in brackets it says, and again, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, fallow. I could be wrong. Most likely I am pronouncing it wrong. 
This is a hand, not hand cut. Um, it's a little stencil that I, I'm pretty sure I could be wrong, but I think it may be a stencil that I cut with my silhouette. I'm not sure. I'm sure somebody watching will correct me if it is actually a purchase stencil. I actually got some nice prints from that 5x5 five five over on the side. And I wasn't even really trying, but look at that. I like it. And I really noticed on the side there, on the right side, I really like that um, yellow oxide with the turquoise color. It's a pretty cool print as well. I always do these jelly prints and I don't know <laughs> what to do with them. I don't know. I need to find uses for them. I'll have a million mini albums. Okay, this is a stamp set from Carabelle. And this one, <laughs> and again with the pronunciation, um, I always pronounced her name Brigitte and then I heard her introduce herself. And I replayed it and replayed it so I could try and get it right, but I know I'm going to butcher it. It, The way she pronounced it, it made it sound like the G was silent, so <laughs> I'm embarrassed to even try to say it. It sounded like she was saying Berheat, and again, I'm not sure, but it was Berheat Koopsen. And the name of the stamp is called Scribbled Leafs and Textured Circles. And this stamp set here, I don't know the name of it, but it is a Tim Holtz set. And you know how Michaels will sometimes get a smaller version of a stamp set? So this is one of those, and it's from years ago. And it just came... It may have come with a stencil, like you know how sometimes they have the smaller stamp sets and it's like a stamp and stencil package deal. I don't know what it's called though. And another Carabell stamp set and this one is called Texture in My, in my Journal. And I'm not even going to try to pronounce her name. Z-O-R-R-O-T-T-E. All these words are making me feel like I don't know how to talk. <laughs> They're so complicated. Okay, hey, time to pull the print. I was up until, well, it was supposed to be 3 a.m., but with the time change, our times went ahead, I was up until almost 4 a.m. playing with the jelly print plate. So that one turned out pretty good. So that's it, and thank you for watching. Bye.